Ladies and gentlemen, following Mr. Mock's talk, Stephen Director, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, will host a conversation and question and answer period. Now please welcome Elmar Mock, co-inventor of Swatch and founder of the innovation factory, Creaholic. Wow, it's impressive to have such a lot of students in front of me. So, basically, I was um, the son of a watchmaker. I make first a profession as a watchmaker, so I learn a profession. And after I make a little bit like you are doing here, I make an engineer school in engineering of watchmaking, so a mixture of praxis and, and theory. And after I make also a plastic engineer school. I was very young, in 26, I had the chance to invent the swatch. But basically the key element is uh, why I, I quit the company in 86, so quite six, 10 years after I started. I was employee during the time I invented the swatch. But uh, I decided I want to change because the world had such, so, such difficulty to innovate. Can we not change something? Why it's so difficult to innovate? What makes the big difference? I saw a few special elements. I have not a long time with you, only 20 minutes to talk, so I will jump directly on the next slide. And the next slide speak. We have a misunderstanding between innovation and renovation. Innovation is making the cow swimming. But renovation is going step by step, control the situation, make like mechanic system and you make an evolution. Tomorrow morning is the projection of yes of today. And if it's different, how can you imagine that tomorrow morning is not the continuation of today? So renovation is always the continuation of today. And that is 95% of all human activity. And it's extremely important to be good in renovation. But renovation brings always the system to the end. The margin go to zero. If you make a product 200 times new, 2.1, 0.2, 0.3, if you come to 2.2550, you have maybe to ask you if you are still on the right track. Because normally your margin go to zero. Why? Because the market asks always for more and is not ready to pay more. And the oxygen of industry is margin. And if you cannot find a new way, you cannot save your margin. So innovation is not the pleasure to find something. Innovation has a clear target, is to increase margin and to propose new way to can have job. And that is important to understand the, the big difference. Another problem is the contradiction between exploration and exploitation. You are here in the university. Theoretically, you should go in the exploration. You should discover all what is science, what is life, what is pleasure. And on the same side, everyone requests to you to go in the deepness, to, to know more about what you still know. So you try to be more specialized. You start try to be better. It's very important is the exploitation but the innovation is this area where you are in between the exploration, so you must be open to everything, and the exploitation, where you are looking for the high specialist, the best specialist, to be the best man worldwide, understand a small element. It's also very important. It's not in contradiction. At the end, you need the exploitation to have success but you can never find a new way out of a focus line. You have to open your eyes. And this mix seems to be in competition, and sometimes it's difficult to mix them together. A problem what you will see in your life, it will always be very difficult, because everything you do there, it's a hurdle around you. Hurdles are normal. And the good thing for hurdle it's also a hurdle for the other one. It's a chance for you, a hurdle. Find the way to, to go over the hurdle and don't be stopped in front of a hurdle. So jump, take the risk, try, do it. That is very important. The second element, what we say, you know, I come from Switzerland, and you know that Swiss and US, they like gun. So nice to shoot, but you will never target something if you don't shoot. 
So if you don't try, you never reach a point. There are no winner in the lottery who are not playing. So if you want to win, please play, play, buy tickets, do something. And so the difficulty in your life will always be, are you ready to take the risk to do, to go really in the making? At school, we learn this kind of curve that normally a sale started, you make more sales in the time, and innovation should be to prolong that. That is renovation, making a product life longer. It's very important, 95% of the occupation of the world. But where is the innovation? The innovation is in the Valley of Dead. It's terrible. You have 20 ID in, in here, the break-even, you can say that approximately 25% of ID come to a break-even only. In the industries, one for 20. 20 dies around this valley. And we in Creaholic, we are simply nar native for the Dead Valley. If you go in Dead Valley, look for guide, look for help. If you go in the Alps, you are also looking for some native on the area to help you to find a way. I'm new in, in Boston, I'm looking also for native to help me to see something nice. So it's normal. So our life, and we chose a very contradictory life in Cryoholic, is to work here. We don't produce, we don't sell, we don't make something. We know that the product we do, they are for our client. And our client is very important. So I started with the Swatch, but the last years I was working with a lot of companies, only some of our clients, some you know, like Bosch, BMW, Nestle, Givaudan, Swisscom, Stryker, and others. And for them, we develop new product. Of course, we have the problem, we, I cannot talk in a public what we do for them because they are owner for everything we did. But I can present some of our startup. There here is some startup we did, like wood welding, bone welding, smixing, Julia, and others. And what are the examples? So the key element is always the same. What, where is the disturbing factor? What is disturbing the world? Because you cannot change the world by marketing. You must propose something who makes sense. You must propose something who helps the people to work with. An example of that startup was wood welding. A colleague started to say, look in the world. A, the, they work with wood a little bit like, like Jesus Christ. It's not really changing how they build houses, how they build furniture. Cannot, can we not weld wood? We can weld polymer, we can weld steel. It's changed totally the way of construction. Why we don't weld wood? All deep specialists explain us it's impossible to weld wood. They're right. But we decide to weld in another way. Look how trees are fixed on the floor. They're not screwed down. They're not riveting. They're not, we say plant, but they're not plug. How is a tree on the floor? It's a fractal growing of something in an unstable environment. And if you go with your car by 50 miles directly in a tree, it's incredible how stable it is. So you have solutions. So we did that for wood welding. And so we developed here, you can see a small film. This is a case for 90 months. So the, the problem was the following. We understand more or less nothing for wood. And we understand nothing for medicine. But one colleague said, yeah, we can weld wood, but basically bone and wood are very similar. Why to not weld bone? So all the specialists explain us it's impossible. You cannot, you have temperature, you have DNA, you have necrosis. A lot of lighting word was using what I was not understanding. And uh, they say, we, we try, and we try it, and it was working. And now we developed a new company named Bone Welding. And from bone welding, here you have an example. It's a licensee in Germany. He, has, he was the number 10 in US market in this specific uh, uh, area for, 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 for scale. And he's today number one. He has 60% of the market of this kind of operation. It's a little bit bloody, but what's happened there? It's a kid who come to world with a scale with welded, without the fontanelle, without the opening. That happened around two per mil to 0.2 percent of the case, you have this, this phenomena. And if you do nothing, the kid will never be developed because his brain cannot develop because the scale is welded. 
So you have to open the scale. You see the surgery, they take out the skin. Here are the eyes of the baby. It's a 90-month baby. They cut out all the, the top of the scale. They cut it like a puzzle, and now they reassemble the puzzle, placing some distance in between. That we don't have invent. That was, it in, that, that was developed. But they were using titanium screw or polymer screw. But you must imagine, you must drill a hole, cut a thread, place a small plastic sheet, so screw it on. It was a six hours operation. So we reduced this operation to two, three hours. How we did it? Oh, excuse me, I make a mistake. Uh, now you see like a bridge. That's a polymer bridge in polylactite. And why it's not working? Do I make something wrong? I try it again. I hope it will not stop. Yes. This is a polylactic bridge. The polylactic is a polymer who will be resorbed for the human, human body. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> but basically, what I do wrong, ah, it's maybe this, this shit who don't who disturb. Where we start? OK. The bridge is polylactic. I don't touch. And now we, we drill with a small uh, pin. The, 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 the top of the bone is very hard. Make a small hole come in the sponges area. And with a polymer pin injected out, out of polylactic with a dental instrument, in reality, it's ultrasonic, we will melt the ultrasonic in contact with the bone, and the melt will go inside the porosity of the bone and be fixed like a tree is fixed on the floor. It's not really welding. It's a mechanical anchoring inside the porosity through a melt process using ultrasonic energy. And through that, we have gained two to three hours operation, much more stability, and no secondary operation to take out the metal part because it's totally resolved for the human being. And this is only to show you that an idea which seems to be crazy in the beginning, welding wood, has totally changed direction by welding bone. What is surprising, today we weld wood massively. So we have developed for a furniture producer in Europe a huge new kind of product which we can produce around 1,000 kitchen per day with this technology. And you will never see cryolic. You will never see. It's always our client who come in front. That we can explain because we made the startup, we developed the product, and after we give license to people to continue it. Another example is Smixin. Smixin was why it's so difficult with our health. We are more of a human being. We travel a lot. I come from Europe. Some of you have come from other parts of the world. So we have a lot of exchange. But the number of chemicals we agree to uh, adopt are limited because we have FDA approval, we have control system, we are afraid about new things. We don't want to change anything. But the virus, the microorganism, they adapt themselves. So we, had, we will have a problem. And we defined that around 2002, 2004, before all this crisis of, uh, of uh, Ashen, h and all that. And we say, yeah, we will have pandemia. We have to find a way who is not chemical, but is more based technology. We decide that hand washing is a key element. A lot of people don't wash hand before eating and don't wash hand after eating. Why? Because it's just disturbing to go to the toilets to wash your hand. So how can we bring not the human to the washing, but the washing to the human. And how can we change the game? How can we make, how can we do that? Because plumbing is a problem. And so we decide we must be able to wash our hand with one deciliter of water. And how we can do that, that you can see in this. So we, today you use approximately in an infrared control system 0.8 liter in an airplane. Every time you push, is 0.3 liter. At home, it's four to five liter water you are using. We want to reduce that to one deciliter, one glass of water. You can see the video. Right? So it's a prototype. It's a stereography prototype with uh, some some pieces from IKEA, and we, we make something looking like something real, but it's a pure prototype. Now it exists. Machine exists. It's in Hong Kong. In uh, 
in uh, some, some, some food. And here you can see, first you go under your hand and you receive a mixture of soap and water. Because soap don't wash, it's soapy water who wash. And if you mix the soap and the water correctly, you have not a lot of need of water to flush out the residue of soap. So you can reduce drastically the consumption. And so you can bring back the, 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 the hand washing to the human and not ask him to go to the toilets. And so the idea is to change this, this effect. And now the company is starting to go in the production and it's, it's starting going that way. But what I can say to you, a lot of people speak about startup. That is somebody, I think, from Boston who write that. And uh, you must, of course, my spontaneous name, you must be a creaholicer. But he, he used the name, uh, the creatops. Kratops. Well, my English is very bad. <laughs> but you understand what I mean with that. Please create something, transform something. Doing is important. Hand on is important. And the school you did now, of course, you have a lot of know how. Know how is fundamental, but not the know how you have now. The know how you don't have. Explore new know how. Interest to the know how of the others and try to share and to find this area where you can have to go deeper. Don't try to jump on a CAD or, the, or a, a 3D printer and print something. Think about, have a concept, exchange, and realize as soon as possible, but as good as possible. So the, the startup is not to start in something, it's really to create something. And I was living the last 30 years in this, and so I am thick today. I'm, I'm creaholic, and I doesn't try to be to be re become normal. And I hope a lot of you will receive this virus of creaholic, and I hope to be we will be not in an un anonymous creaholic team, but trying to work together to find new way in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alma, for a, for a really uh, thought-provoking presentation. Uh, and I'd like to welcome everybody to this presentation. I'd particularly like to welcome our friends from Swissnex, uh, who have partnered with us to, to make this event happen, and a special Felix, uh, Felix Mosna, who, <laughs> who's taking uh, some uh, phone pictures. Uh, who, who is the council and CEO of Swissnex, uh, the, boss, uh, the consulate of Switzerland. We've had a great partnership with Swissnex over the years in, in investigating innovation, and I hope that that really continues. So we're uh, going to enter the question and answer phase of, of this presentation. Uh, I'd like those of you in the audience who are going to ask questions to please use the microphones that are stationed on either side of the room. Uh, we'll also be accepting questions over social media, and Oliver Nelson, one of our ambassadors, who is also uh, uh, pursuing a degree in international business and minoring in Portuguese, uh, will be asking those questions. So let me just start out by asking a question while people have a chance to, to formulate their, their own. Um, you, you said you went to engineering school. Yes. And, and you didn't, and, and we all know you invented the swatch. You didn't spend a lot of time on that, as you said you were not going to do. But I'm curious, when you were in engineering school, um, was there any mentors or any particular professors that had some influence in helping you end up in the industry you were? Or was it a foregone conclusion that since you were in Switzerland, you were going to end up in the watch business? Yeah, you know, my father was watchmaker, so it's, it was a pre-oriented pre, uh, pre tendency. But I, I really like this fine mechanics, this precision. It was a pleasure for me. So I had a lot of pleasure. And of course, I had. But my mentor was maybe not only the teacher. It was friends of my father. So really artists making incredible pieces and renovated pieces for the 18th, 19th century. So I was simply fascinated for this world. So it, I really love it. My sec second passion was robotic. 
So I was absolutely passionate by robots, and I, my, my target was to move in the direction of robotic. And I came to ETA because I was employed without job. So it was the crisis in that time. We was only 15 engineers for my class who received the degree that year. And for the 15, we was 15 jobless. So I had the chance that my, for my, my diploma work, I had a very, an expert who was not very good, so he gave me an excellent note. So I had uh, the chance to have the best note of the class, not because I was the best, simply because my expert was not the best. And so I was very lucky. So I received my first job. And this, this experience through the, the school was fundamental because I learned a lot of technology, of know-how, understanding. And after I, I, was, I received a new job in polymer, they asked me, yeah, make an injection molding tool. I was never making plastic and injection molding. I decided to quit the job and to go again at school and make a second degree in polymer technology. And that was fascinating me. So I discovered machine, I was using machine, I discovered the real world. It was a lot of praxis-oriented experience. And this was fantastic. And I came back in a company who was engaged me, due, not because I was good, because they said, yeah, we, we have a social responsibility and we have to engage one of these poor young guy coming out of, uh, of this school without job. So it was a human, humanitarian reason they engaged me. They had no job to do. So I tried to play around and I had incredible freedom and I was trying to exercise and to do things, but to propose also way. So the freedom is not only to have nothing to do, the freedom is the chance to make something different and try to convince the other one. So you must first be convinced yourself so I was convinced that this direction is fascinating. The second point, you have to convince your friends. Because if you cannot convince your friends, maybe you, you are in the wrong way. And the second is take a risk. I take a risk to lose my job. I take a risk to have no job. I take a risk to go to school. But it was no safety, no safe job, no safe money. But I think that is the real motto. Money is never a target, it's a result. It's probably because I, I am not rich now, because I always consider that a target, but <laughs> a result. So I hope once I will have something. But it, it's not the money is not the driven energy. The driven energy is your focus, your pleasure, convince other people to take, take risk. Great. I, w I would make the observation that you're going to school, then going to get a job, and then going back to school is kind of the, our approach to education here, the cooperative edu education. Yeah, I discover your school through you, and I think the way you are educating this young generation is very similar to the, the way I was educated in Switzerland. Hand on, try, and learn out of it, and try to export what you learn in your work. And I say, your, certain people think that the brain uh, the, is, is, is the key element, and the the hand are the prolongation of the brain. It's not true. The brain is the prolongation of the, your hand. The animal, they started with small brain, but with a lot of hands, <laughs> certain eight, nine. But, but they develop brain afterwards. They not started by the brain. They started by the movement. So learn, grip on, take on, and, and use this to, to transform that in your brain in something new. Making something without trying to make it better makes no sense. So you have to think also. But thinking without making makes no sense. Questions from the audience? Hi. Can you, would you mind using the microphone? We do that because it is being broadcast. I just want to say uh, thank you very much. I'm Robert Beale. Uh, chair the School of Public Policy in the Dukakis School at uh, Eastern. And I'd like to just say thank you because my, one of my best friends and Harvard classmates, Ronald Winston, the son of Harry Winston, and I were in France 30 years ago and we went out one afternoon and what did we do? we each bought a Swatch watch. <laughs> now I only have 120 Swatch watches. <laughs> and it's Thanks. been more fun because people <coughs> like President Yoon will say to me, 
Robert, it's not what tie you're wearing, what swatch watch are you wearing? <laughs> and it's been more fun, and I just want to say uh, thank you so much, because I always enjoy not what tie I'm wearing, but what watch I'm wearing. <laughs> so just, I want to say thank you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> thank you for sharing your expertise. I'm Chirag Vario, a new professor here at Northeastern in, in Engineering Design. Uh, so my question to you is, um, a lot of students come in feeling that uh, they get it right on the first try. And uh, perhaps you have a story or two that you'd like to share where things didn't go the way that you thought they would and how you overcame that. Yeah. Uh, nothing <laughs> is going like I want that is going in the beginning. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's such a lot of story of, of hurdle, and how to jump over the hurdle is the difficulty. So uh, some hurdle, sometimes you, 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 you was correct, but you don't have to find the way. So in the swatch, for example, the first swatch samples we did, the hand was turning in the wrong direction. <laughs> so it, you look a little bit strange, because in marketing, you can pretend, oh, you know, the crisis in Iraq, and the uh, dollar is too high. And you can always find a reason why it's not working. In technology, if you say the hand should turn from left to right, and though your hand turned from right to left, you are an, an idiot, simply. <laughs> so the, the, the fantastic thing in technology, you always come back to the earth because you always make mistakes. The problem is not to make a mistake, it's try to learn out of your mistake to don't repeat the mistake. But so do, accept your mistake and learn out of it. Is there another question here? Yes. I'm wondering if you can tell us Despite those initial struggles, how did you and the other co-founders know that Swatch was worth making in a two, into an entirely separate band as opposed to just another line and another company? I, I was not imagined to make a Swatch. Uh, my, my target is to, is, was to, to, to buy a machine. So I was, I was playing. So I had an old injection molding machine, really a bad machine. I decided to buy the Rolls-Royce of injection molding machine. And I, I make an order for half a million dollars at that time, and the company was clo close of bankruptcy. And I received a phone call for my general director. I was in the last level of the company. It was general director, director, vice director, president of the, uh, and, and under you have Elmar Mock and Jacques Muller. It was not possible to go deeper. <laughs> and so I received a phone for the top guy. I never met him before. It was 11 o'clock. I have exactly two hours in front of me. So I work with my friend Jacques to represent why we, what can we imagine if we could have this kind of technology. I come in the, in the boss uh, uh, room with a conviction I will lose my job. So uh, he started very hardly with me, and after half an hour of bad words and strange remarks concerning myself, he asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, look, if we would have this kind of technology, we could make this kind of product. And I was not knowing that he was waiting for such a product. I was not informed. And the first target was to make a, 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 a watch for cheap country a cheap Swiss watch. That was the target, not to make a fashionable product. And it was not a swatch. The first name was Vulgaris. The second name was Popularis. That give you how bad the opinion for the rest of the company was. And everyone said, these two guys, they will lose the job. Don't work with them. Never touch this shit. Uh, wow, <laughs> no. And so we have tried to sell this watch to everyone. We have asked Bic if we want to, uh, to sell watches. He was saying no. We was asking for battery producer. If you, you buy battery, why you cannot buy watches in the same place? Nobody was willing. We asked all the brand we had in Switzerland. No one was ready to take these watches because it was a one-way watch, a non-repairable watch that was considered that a scandalous situation. And the, jo the boss, because if the boss don't want, you have no chance. The boss, it, it was, um, so he was really so bright. And so it was like a Steve job at that time. And, and he, he decided to go in the market in the US. And we have made a miss, a totally disaster. 
It was in Houston. It was a disaster. <laughs> we sell the watch, a normal watch. And it was a contact with another company in the US. It was uh, Bloomingdale's, who proposed to make a new brand and to make a shop in shop. And he said, yeah, OK, good idea. So we could make now fashion product. And that was come very late. And the name Swatch, of course, is Swiss watches. But in reality, you cannot protect Swiss watches, because every Swiss watches will be Swatches. And so we had the uh, fantastic luck that in the US, a Swatch is a piece of, of fabric for fashion. And so we were using this word Swatch, piece of fabric for fashion, as brand for these watches. Of course, it was a contraction of Swiss watches. But that we was never able to recognize. Well, they would never recognize. They pretend second watch and other thing, but it was that. And, and so we was not knowing what we was doing. We was pretending we will produce five million pieces in five years, and we will disappear. Nobody was imagined that we have produced more than 600 million, that the, 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 the business, only the, the um, the money was a company has made out of this product, not the, the same price, but the benefit is six billion dollars. Six billion dollars came to the company through this product. No one was having this idea. Everyone was saying in the beginning, oh, these two guys, they make it, they are in charge. In case you are looking for the guy making the mistake, these two guys, Muller Mock, <laughs> they are the young people who try to kill the Swiss industry. And we was not knowing that we was making a revolution. You never know you make a revolution during the moment you make the revolution. You know it always later. And the, the target is not making revolution. The target was to simplify the system, to make the best possible product, as cheap as possible, as robust as possible, and giving a new possibility. And the idea to make fashion come later, and we adapt this cheap product to a fashion product. I want you to understand that nobody knows. But you, you are walking, and doing the walk, you discover. And do you, you change. Wood welding, we start to weld wood. But the real business is welding bone. We, do, we was not knowing that in the beginning. We were trying to weld wood. If we would be wood specialist, we will still focus on wood. We change to bone, because we understand nothing for bone and nothing for wood. That is the chance of the horizontal bar in the exploration. Accept that you don't know everything, and accept that other ideas can come from somewhere and work with colleagues. Here in the campus, you have the incredible chance to mix such a lot of know-how. Of course, you learn in a focused direction. You learn in the direction of a profession. But enjoy this time to discover the other one. They are the important one, not what you are studying today. That's a good, good observation. Thank you. We have a question on social media. How has Swatch remained relevant in the constantly evolving and competitive watch industry? You speak for the smartwatch, I suppose. For Swatch? In general. Yes. yes. Yeah, first, I, must I have a very bad news for you. Uh, you know, uh, humanity exists before internet. And you know, the people that was making meeting for 100 years. And the social network was only possible. It's not your time today. You are too young to remember that. But we had to fix an appointment point and a time to meet the people. We have no phone to say, hello, how where are you? So we had to have agendas, time, and point, geography point where we can meet. And so the, the invention of the watch is very old. The first watch was for religion item to pry at the right time. That is the origin of measuring time in the day. After it, the physics can, to say we need the time as reference. After the geography, we need time to be able to make a geographic positioning. And in the US, in the early 20s, they decide everyone should have a watch. Why? Because if you have a social network and you want to work together, you must to know how late it is. It's not important if the time you have on the, your wrist is the same time or the, uh, not important. We should all have the same, that we can make an appointment, take the train and go to work. So the archetype of the social networking was watches. Now the modern way of sociali socialization is different. 
The young people, they are somewhere at some time, and they met. Because they have phone, they can exchange SMS and so on, and they can find the right people and the unknown place at the unknown time. That is incredible. And this new revolution will come on the wrist also. Don't forget that pocket watches, this for me is nothing more than the pocket watches. Pocket watches was produced very long time. The wrist watches started in 1805. The first one was for the sister for Napoleon. And the real wristwatch came in the in First World War because they were attacking in program. They were crazy. At 5 past 10, there was <coughs> 1,000 guys going to dead. It, it, was, it was incredible. And, and they were working with time. It was difficult with a gun and a helmet and everything and a, a watch pocket. So they, <laughs> they fixed the pocket directly on the wrist. That was the beginning of the, of the wristwatches. And the number of wristwatches coming in the same number as the pocket watches was 1939. So for, for 1800 to 1949, it was more pocket watches as wristwatches. Wristwatches are fantastic because this is, this is a talisman. It's not the time is so important. It's where you are, in which club you are, in which group you are, and how rich you are, so you show where you are. But basically, the time is a secondary problematic. It's nice to have the time. It's nice to have. Today, you will, have, you will be in the club for Apple, in the club for Samsung, in the club for someone, and you will have this kind of object on your wrist. But if this object don't make your life better, in 10 years, you will go back in a pocket. So the problem of the smart watches is the human interaction, the quality of the interaction, the quality of the messages, the what are you doing, why you are on the wrist, and they have a chance. And this market is coming, it's very clear. And I could not understand that the Swiss watches was not reacting before. For me, it's a shock myself. I'm sure that this revolution of the social networking on the wrist is as important that the quartz watches was in 1970. And the Swiss watch was close to disappear in 1970, and we was coming over. And I can, the people having expensive watches, don't throw them away, they will keep a value. A big problem of all watches, or all system, will be tomorrow, how to have more using less. Can we continue to use such a lot of material, of energy, of thing, so like we do today? Can we change our wristwatch every two years because the technology change? Can we, what are we doing with this? Can we, because what is surprising, you see a lot of people having watches who are 20 years old, 30 years old, 50 years old. And probably we have to find a way to have a smart element having a certain relation to our environment. And I am sure that it's not enough to place the pocket watch in on the wrist. We have to make something more. And this, I think, nobody has today the answer. But the answer will come. I am sure this market grow. That will be the next big market in the, the wrist instrument industry. There was a question over here. I mean, from a uh, student from EC department. Can you speak I, into closer to the microphone? Yeah, um, this is a very nice talk. I just have a question, kind of related to previous one. Uh, as a younger generation, we use smartphone more often than the watch. Um, what's your next step to in attract young people to wear more swatch, swatch than using their cell phone? How you attract this kind of? Yeah. First, I'm not in Swatch. I quit the company uh, 30 years ago. Because our convenience is a sum of idiot and they will never make something new. Uh, <laughs> what I surprised me is all the world is covered of this kind of idiot. And it's not a specific problematic of watch industry. You have everyone this kind of problem. The question for me was always, how can we find something different? So my life today is not watches. Is packaging, is, 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 is health industry, is uh, food industry, is new, new kind of product. 
And I see also in the watch industry a huge potential. So I think they can go. But you know, the time you have on your wrist has one big advantage today, what the cell phone don't have. I don't know if that happened to you once, that your battery was dead. I don't know if that happened once, but if that happened once, you are lost. The archetype of the networking is still to know how late it is and do I have a meeting. So you need a minimum brain to remember what you have to do. If all your brain is in that machine, you are in danger. So use a part of your brain to remember some, some detail. The second help system you can have is how late it is. So I think if the smartwatch are as dumb that this bloody machine, <laughs> 10 years ago, I had a phone who was leaving for one week. This, this machine I have to reload every night. Yesterday I was close to done come to the hotel because I was using my GPS and all the battery was dead and I arrived close of the hotel with an alarm, less than 10 person battery. I uh, arrived in the hotel with, with two person battery. I was close to be alone in, in Boston <laughs> without my, 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 my system because I have no brain. I don't know where is my hotel. So the second element, so the, the future smartwatch, they may, may be hybrid between long life time indication to have like a, a surviving element and intelligence exchange. So intelligence has to come on the wrist, that I am sure. Now, which position have Swatch? I don't know ID. For, s for one year, they was pretending, yeah, 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 nothing, it's not for us. They are crazy. It's clear for them. It's very clear. And they will come. You will see that the watch industry will adapt. They are coming a little bit late. But you know, it's not always the first going in the run who has the best result out of the run. So I think they could still make a good job. I think they are not strong enough. You know, for me, the communication industry and the watch industry are like bird and fish. The fish are the communication industry. Extremely energy, big, big uh, teeth, big mouth, big size, incredible uh, wall, fantastic animal. The, the watch industry are only bird. Small, agile, small market. Now the question is now, who will go together? Are the the flying machine learning to swim, or the swimming machine learning to fly. And it will be a transformation. And now, you know, in the world, there are some flying fish, and they are good uh, swimming birds. And so, uh, swimming birds are not so bad. So, it's not really fish, it's not really bird, but it's quite a nice machine. So, you have a chance, it's a new market is open. Because these two worlds, they lose jealous. Imagine a watch we sell now for an average for $10,000 for one watch. You can buy how many, uh, the, the 10 of this machine? How can they make to increase the value of that to make more margin? And they look to the watches, oh my God, the money they are making. How can I make, go in this? They dream for the market money of, of watches. And the watches, they look to the fish and say, wow, it's great, this ocean, this ability, this communication world. But how can he go fishing? How can I go in the water? And they have to learn each other to change model. And I don't know if the flying fish will become before the... Uh, swimming bird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Take a question from this side. Hi, thanks. Uh, building on, on your comment and your uh, previous question, uh, how do you think that you will leverage uh, this new workforce, this uh, millennials, Generation Y, in order to uh, continue reinventing your brands, your industry right now? Yeah. L the, f the key question of innovation is the disturbing factor. What disturb you? Not the rest of the world, you. You must understand what is around you, what you don't like, you want, you want to change. The problem is we are chameleon. We adapt us to our world and we don't want to change. And why to change? And the key question is what is disturbing? A success story is always making your life better, easier, more fun. So you have to find the way, what is disturbing you?
And only that is the indicator, because the innovation is to the humanity, was a, a pearl is to uh, an oyster. A lucky oyster don't produce pearl. You must have a certain pain point. And once you discover your pain point, not an, a pain point you'd imagine, a pain point we share with other one, and you can propose a way to make it disappearing, you will make a pearl. And this pearl growing, that is the innovation learning. How, what is disturbing and how can I propose something helping my colleagues? It's not a question of science. You must find, you must feel in love in humanity. You must feel in love in what you are doing. And you must discover how can it be better, not enjoying, but trying to imagine it different. So the creative people, they try to change the world and the people enjoying try, try to enjoy the world. And orgasmos is only a moment. The target is how to come to the pleasure. It's the invention is a very short period. The fantastic time is all the time before. What you prepare, you are thinking around, you are looking for solution, you try. And try, try, try. Use your hand, use your experience, and learn out of your mistake. And love the other one. So we'll take one from social media and then we'll come over here. Um, another one from Twitter. Are you considered a celebrity among swatch collectors? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm a very normal human being. <laughs> so uh, I, one of the questioners asked me, if, are, are we re what is creativity? And you know, my, my, my shocking answer was, we are all creative bonobos. We are monkey, creative monkey. And the humanity is fundamentally creative. And we all have in our deep genetic this ability. Only 0.3% of the humanity stay in this creative mind. But 30% have the possibility. So I don't feel different than the other one. I'm simply a very, very normal man. I don't think I'm a celebrity. Uh, I, I was, uh, I, I like what I do. I am an engineer first. I was not making talk. I, st I, st my, I start my first talk 10 years ago because a friend for me asked me, can you not speak how you are organized? And I did it and it seems yeah, the people had pleasure. I have maybe a strange way to express me, but uh, basically I'm a totally normal guy. I am working every day on product, on project, on product. So my life is by doing and not by thinking. So and by, if you do, you make such a lot of mistake that you are not celebrity, you are a monkey trying to find a solution. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for your time here. Um, I'm sure that you, before you switched to the watch, from the watch industry, you had a, an exit strategy. What was that strategy and how were you, were you able to transition from that to what you do now? <laughs> mistake, mistake. <laughs> you know, I think first, all this I started the company in a disaster. I was an anarch anarchist guy. I was free. I feel well in this chaotic situation. I love chaos. So in this chaos, I feel at home. I make this bloody swatch, and suddenly the world changed. All the organizers come back with SAP, with a structure, with ISO 9000, with controlling, with quality control, everything. I lose my freedom. And suddenly I say, oh, all this manager, a manager, I assume of us all, I have to quit, I have to go out. And I, I started to work with other company. I was like the guy in the highway hearing on the radio, be careful, somebody come in the wrong direction. So you yeah, somebody, thousand. You must ask yourself if you are in the wrong direction. So I was in the wrong direction. And the second mistake I did is exactly what you were asking. I was thinking, Yang, the world is waiting, waiting on me. Nobody was waiting. No one. How to survive? What can I do? And I started to think, what is my job? What I'm able to do? Where do I have pleasure? And what can I offer? And I decided in 86 to go in innovation. It was not a word recognized. And I started to propose solution to people who was not looking for solution. It was very difficult. The first four years, I was close to, to bankruptcy. And after four years of work, I was 
I was giving lessons in university, <laughs> in material, uh, because I had a salary was needed to, to, to that my family can survive. And some of my, my students decide, I want to work with you. I say, are you crazy? <laughs> I cannot pay my salary. How can I pay yours? <laughs> and uh, and I, I make a revolution in one night. I grow for 100 person. I engage one of my students. That was a dramatic situation. And for that time, it never stopped. But it, I was not driving the company. I am able only to drive four or five guys, not more. But the four or five, they started to open their wings and they started to have other colleagues with them they was working. So we have a very horizontal structure, a very strange structure in Creaholic. And Creaholic name comes because you must be crazy and sick to go in that direction. You, we don't have really competitors in that field because uh, our biggest competitors is the internet development for any company, for every company and all the startup. So we have a huge competition, but not exactly what we are doing. It's very strange. Sorry? It's very strange what we are doing. It's not unusual. We have, we have time for one more short question. All right. Um, so three days ago, Swatch announced a, uh, a smartwatch with only one function to measure beach volleyball scores. Um, does this sort of specialized smartwatch create like a niche for other future specialized smartwatches? I don't know. I'm not by Swatch. I, <laughs> I don't know. I cannot understand. Uh, maybe it's better to f start with something than to start with nothing. So I think it's, I'm happy to hear that Swatch decide to come a little bit in mm -hmm. low smart level. It's not very, very smart. But uh, you, can, you know, uh, some trees start with very small element. So I hope they will develop because I like Swatch still. I'm proud for Swatch and I live in the country of Swatch and I live in the watchmaking industry. So if the watchmaking will have a disaster, it will also be a disaster for me. So I'm not working in the strategy of the watches. I'm not working anymore for watches. I'm working in totally different field. But what I learn out of that, I try to transmit to the other one. And that is the fascination of this exploration. So I, I discover every day new things. I like to discover a new country, new people, new culture, not only new technology, but also new technology. And for me, I'm very happy to hear that Swatch change opinion, because one year ago, Mr. Hayek, son, was pretending uh, it's only gadget, it's for nothing, for one year. So it changed, it's, it's nice. You see that you can change opinion. So I hope you can change opinion if you are in the wrong direction. Yes, you too. Thanks. Thanks very much, Alma.